still another kind of architecture that we have out of the Middle Ages and since too, but but there, it's pretty hard to find any examples older than the Middle Ages. But uh, I, it is, I am so fond of it. Uh, and I'm excited enough, I've even got my hammer here. I call this Excalibur. I, not that I'm going to use it at the moment, but just to, to keep me company, because I, I am a carpenter. Timber framing. Uh, there's a whole host of stuff online. And people love it. They love it. They love the way it looks. Uh, sadly, the real thing isn't done very much anymore. But people love the way it looks. Um, and, and I'll describe the, the components of it in just a moment. The point is, you, 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 buildings were made out of big timbers, not two-before studs, like light construction that's done now. Um, it, now, the word vernacular, I wanted to get that in there, vernacular architecture. Uh, it interests me so much more than other architecture. Vernacular, it really means what were normal people building. What did the barns look like? What did the houses look like? Not the governmental buildings. Uh, it's one of the reasons I'm going to go to Europe uh, in May. I, I want to look at the vernacular architecture. I want to ride the train. And I want to look and see what the people do. But anyway, uh, timber framing, uh, it was the standard way to build. Uh, from barns and cottages right up through in uh, the Middle Ages. Uh, and the components, uh, I can draw this a little bit better, but not very well. Uh, you would have a post, a vertical one. We're talking maybe stuff, maybe, maybe, well, sometimes that big. Six by six inches, maybe, eight by eight. A post, those are verticals, vertical ones. The one that goes across this way, horizontal, those are called beams. And you've got to have braces. If you didn't have braces, they go on a 45, the whole thing would sway. You always have to have braces in there. Uh, if you've got something going along midway, that's called a rail. Okay. Yeah, it's, that's called a rail. And the whole thing would sit on massive timbers called sills. Uh, and they would be on top of stones. You, you, didn't, you didn't really need a foundation. You could just lay stones in the ground and set it there. Because the whole structure was so heavy and strong, it didn't, there was no question of it being bolted down like, like modern like, like modern houses. Uh, sometimes you would have uh, this, uh, I call it an overshot. There are other names for it, but, but uh, you would have part of the building sticking out and then you could go on and build up the next story. Germany, especially, you can see that a lot. And, and with each story, the, the building would get bigger and bigger, and of course if you have a street like that, that makes a protected area. But you also get more of a building for less of a foundation. And there's, there's also the idea that by having overshot, the weight here springs that beam. It puts a spring to it, so instead of wanting to sag, it actually wants to spring up. They're, they're, I don't know if they're completely sure why they did that, but that's the best answer I, I heard. Um, now, where things come together, that involved joinery. You'd have a square hole. I probably should have drawn this or tried to. That, the square hole would be called a mortise, and a tenon, like a tongue, would go up into that square hole, and then a pin, it's called, or a wooden peg, driven through there to hold the whole thing together. No nails. No nails at all. You basically didn't need nails at all. Uh, in, in, these, uh, in these buildings, or bolts or screws. Uh, and, they, and since you didn't have metal against wood, there wasn't rusting involved either. And you could drive the pins apart, take the whole building apart, put the whole building back together like a big puzzle. And actually you could even roll the thing over. I mean, it, 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 if you had something big enough to, you could roll it over and it would still be fine. If you filled in, it wasn't open, it was usually filled in. That was called infill in English, infill. And that was either brick or wattle and daub, which would be sticks and straw and clay and even plastered over with, uh, with a cow manure as part of the mixture for the plaster. Uh, people like it enough now that even though they want to have centrally heated houses with insulation, I've often seen, often, they'll build a building and then they'll just nail boards on the outside to make it look like that. Even though it's a lie, even though it's fake, 
They like the way it looks. Restaurants will do that all the time here in the United States. Now, in many places in Europe, they don't have to because they have them there. And that structure, it'll last 500 years, probably 1,000 years, if it's just kept dry. Uh, all right. Uh, if you would look up timber framing online, you'll just find all kinds of stuff about it. Uh, the Woodwright Shop, uh, I didn't look for it, but if you could find a series on the Woodwright Shop where the guy, uh, it was a series on television where he goes to Franconia uh, in Germany to a museum. It, it, it's great, and I always like my students to see it. It's very, very good, and, and I hope you find a way to find it. And of all the fancy books in timber framing, and beautiful books, this, I think, is the best that I ever saw. This humble little book. It was published in... Uh, in England, part of the Shire series, and even though it's humble, I honestly think it's the best I've ever seen. Uh, and this old Ways Museum that I haven't talked too much about, but where I am, uh, it is part one of my dreams, my hopes, that eventually this farm will become a, a, an old Ways Museum. And that is the direction that I want to go, because I think it is far superior to new ways of building. I have one more video.